Now, uh, here's a question. Why don't you offer as an option uh, a $20 question box? So if someone wants to pay $20 to get an answer, doesn't that mean more uh, than the average question that comes in? I have $200 worth of questions. Well, I get this several times. You're an objectivist, so why aren't you charging? And I have to repeat it. My goal uh, is not money. By the way, why would you uh, think that if it were money, you could have me for $20 a question? I don't want to boast, but I've been offered a lot more uh, than that. But in any event, you're wrong to think that if you want to pay 20 you will submit better questions than poor people who can't afford 20 or who, who won't give 20. And that, in my experience, is absolutely not true. I've had many cases of very wealthy people ask much dumber questions than very uh, poor uh, uh, students. So I'm just leaving out, in addition to the basic motivation, what this $20 is going to cost me. In terms of the accountancy and who keeps track of the income and what hotel do I put the IRS agent that's uh, auditing me uh, and what about all the time in my life, which I consider the most precious commodity, devoted to overseeing this business. I don't want to go into business. Uh, uh, the whole idea of this, it's in a few minutes here and there without being you know, committed to uh, trying to become a, a competitor of, uh, of Harvard. So the money I would make uh, if I charge your price or even 10 times that price would, would cause in me so much grief that I would end up paying it to a psychiatrist or, or a cardiologist. Now we get the other side. One side is opposed uh, because uh, I don't charge. And now listen to this question. If saving the culture is so important, why does the Ayn Rand bookstore not offer its material for free? Denying accessibility to crucial ideas could make the difference uh, between winning and uh, losing. So you see, uh, I'm damned if I don't charge and I'm damned if I do charge, so you can't win. Now let's say then, all objectivist works are given away free. Well, there's a lot of cost to produce those works. What happens to the people who produce them, who spent the time, to the staff, the, the paper, the rent, etc., etc.? And fundamentally be, beneath that, what happens to the reward for the people that did the time uh, and did the work? Are they supposed to sacrifice so that the culture as a whole uh, is doing better? In other words, the culture as a whole, as presented in this question, is helpless and cannot be saved. The only means it can have to be saved is if the people who know the truth uh, give the answers to the culture. So the idea is that culture should benefit because it doesn't know uh, at the price of those who do know are being sacrificed. They are to become serfs, uh, and meanwhile, they're to become serfs while preaching egoism. They're to live uh, in starvation conditions to explain to other people what's wrong with that, choosing that uh, as a way of life. Saving the culture is a means, not an end. If you think that the culture is in a bad state and you think uh, that you want to spend some of your time or all of your time on that, that's fine. But if you don't think that or your time is 100% taken up with the, your own profession, then that's not an end that concerns you. And if you're prepared to say, I want to spend 100% of the time on my work, if I get blown up when the culture goes, I'll live with that. That is your uh, prerogative. But there is no such thing as an egoistic crusader who says, I, don't, I want only spiritual uh, uh, rewards. I want only to benefit uh, others and save the world. Completely, completely unjustified. So, objectivists are justified in charging, 
But sometimes there's a case where they'd rather not. Uh, I hope you can uh, tolerate that. It is not a contradiction.